Hi, I'm Liam Rossinia. Hi, I'm John Beresford. And this is a special podcast to celebrate 25 years of show races and the red card. This is 25 for 25, a show races and the red card podcast. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. I remember as a young kid going to watch Sheffield United um, and I used to go with my mates and some older lads and I remember looking back and thinking, yeah, I used, was I racist? Because I was using racist chants while I was watching. There weren't a lot of black players in them days and, you know, I was one on the, on the terraces who were joining in with it all and it wasn't until... Um, it wasn't until I got older and educated myself and started to mix with certain players uh, to realise just uh, you know how wrong I was. And I think I think Jed sort of listening to what I had to say thought, "Well, hang on a bit. You know, are you willing to take this further? You know, because a lot of it, from my point of view, it was it's very much education. You've got to get to, you know the kids some to understand you know what it's all about. So we're uh, we then decided to go to a school to, to uh, talk about his experiences and that's where it kind of started from myself and Shaka. The first time I encountered racism um, from a personal point of view, I was, on the, I was in a park with my brother on the swings and it, it's, it's interesting what John said. I think it's a really key point. It's when you're young and you're a child, you're learning from your role models, your parents, the people around you. So you, it's, you find it really difficult to, um, to understand uh, what racism is, uh, what prejudice is. So, and I don't think that makes you a bad person. Uh, so in my case, my first experience, I was with my brother in the park and a, and a little girl said to her friends, uh, why are those two monkeys on a swing? And it was the first time I, but she was only, she must've been only eight or nine herself, you know? So it wasn't her fault. It was just a lack of education. Again, I think yeah. John's point about how important the work that show races and the red card does in terms of educating the next generation is crucial in terms of understanding and appreciating each other's cultures and actually celebrating the fact that in some ways we are all different but at the same time we're all we're all the same we all want the same things we have the same values the same morals and um that's why i think it's really important that education is is the vital tool in making things better for our society i think that's spot on i mean my thing when i look back you know, there was, a, there was a lot of people who actually used racist comments, but weren't mm. particularly racist, as I say, yeah. just weren't educated. Yeah, and I, I remember being in this room, and I, I called him a black, with T-W-A-T, and it, but it was just off, off, off the tongue, and his face dropped, and it was like, he went, you can't call me that. And I said, hang on a minute, you just called me a little, you know? It's, it's, it's what you are. You are. And I said, not, not that he was a bit. I said, it's just a comment. He went, no, 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 no. It isn't. He says, he says, have you ever walked home from school and had to cross the road just because of your size? You know, he says, you know, me uh, as, as a black person, he says, you don't realise the, the hatred and, and what, what, you, what I have to put up with. And him telling me that, so it, it's a, well, it struck a chord. And I yeah. thought to myself, yeah. And then, you know, when you, so when you start to hear it and you hear people call uh, someone that name, I, I, I would stand up. I would say, hang on a bit, why are you calling them? You know, mm. there is some people that just like say needed educated. Don't get me wrong, there's people who are bigots. There's some people yeah. who are not changed. It's, it's in them. And uh, you've just got to hope that, you know, you, you know like show race and red card uh, resonates with them and it actually changes the mind in some capacity. But where we've got to do is you've got to get the, the younger element because it, that, that's what makes such a difference. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, John. I think it's really interesting that uh, two things come up from what, what you said there is the first thing you learned from being integrated. You learned yeah. from spending time with someone who was a different colour to you. You learned and you Absolutely. had an empathy and understanding that you wouldn't have had before. And I think for the, the second thing, I think it's really key, is a, is a point you made is it changed your behaviour. So... Sure. so you know, so because you had an empathy and understanding that you'd learned from integrating with different types of people, you were then able to affect things for the better around you. And I think that's what it's all about. Um, and, and I think that's the point we need to make now. I think a lot of people out there, you get bad people in all walks of life, but a lot of people out there are maybe saying or doing or acting in the wrong way. But it's not out of a bad place. It's just because they don't understand. 
And, um, yeah. you know, the, the, the term of, of being black, it's not just, uh, you know, the color of your skin. It's, it's the history behind that and what it represents and what people have had to go through for hundreds and hundreds of years. And I always say to people, I don't, if we don't teach it in the school curriculum and we don't speak about it in the mainstream media and we don't actually educate you know, on all media platforms, then how can you expect people to understand what they don't know? It's, it's actually yeah. impossible. So I think that's why this work, you know, that Jed and, and, and fortunately for me, my, my dad is, is really big on, is so mm -hmm. important because I, I do believe that most people in, in life are actually good people. And when they do act bad, it's out of the place of, of not, not ignorance because ignoring something is knowing it's there. It's just not understanding what actually is out there in the first place. Yeah, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't applaud you enough because it is it. And I just need the, the, I think the modern day players, which are, you know, they are helping. They don't realise, you know, it's just going to visit a school, the impact that they have, you know. And I know, you know, as I said, I know, I know the difference it made when I, I still now go, you know, to, but I'm just an old git now. It doesn't resonate as much. <laughs> it, but it, you, you just know, you can see it, you know. If I go to Barnsley and they just have a couple of young lads there, you can see the kids, you know, and just to just to have a conversation with them, and it, it, it strikes a chord. I know they're listening to me, and I, I know you think of it. If, if a bit of it sinks in, then great. But yeah. I, we need people like yourself who are in the game just to keep just giving the, the you know the modern day player a little nudge and say, by the way, come on, it's an hour out of your time. You know what's it? You're actually going to make they're going to make such a difference, and they're going to benefit from it. That that's what I want from the modern day player. You know, please do just do a little bit more. Yeah, 100%. I don't think it's, it's difficult. I was quite lucky because my dad was a player and my, my heroes were footballers and my dad was my hero growing up. So yeah. I knew the impact that being a footballer can have on young on kids. You know, if you went into a school and asked kids who their biggest role model is or who they look up to the most, probably eight, nine times out of ten, they'll say a really famous footballer that they, that they look up to and they aspire to, to be. So if they're giving them the right messages and we're giving them the right messages within this game, that's how you yeah. move things forward and you change things. I hear a lot of people say football shouldn't be involved in, in things outside of football. I completely disagree with that because football is a vehicle for the better. It's a vehicle yeah. for change. And, and the people who actually have power are people who, have, who are players like Marcus Rashford and what he's done. Oh. You know, people like Raheem Sterling. You know, people like Harry Kane and Jordan Henderson who always stand up for the right things. They're the people that can actually make a change. So, you know, all, all, and I feel as well, a lot of footballers now in, in the next generation are actually seeing that, you know, because of social media and they see the responses that they get through what, for, through what they put out on their social media. They see they can change people's perceptions. So I think it's really important to use social media in the right way as well. And I think every single person on this planet, no matter what the colour, gender, religion, as a part to play moving society forward, not only on you know, racial issues. I think everybody has, um, everyone's unique in their own way and everyone has something to give regardless. And I think whether you're white or you're black or you're, you're Asian or wherever you are, you can make a positive difference and a positive change. So if you, and I think as well, it's really interesting having difficult conversations sometimes is the best thing you can do. For example, what, what John said, you know, about his time with Darren Beckford, maybe calling him a name that he didn't understand, not being, not being afraid to say, I might be wrong, but I think this. And then you can have an actual reasoned discussion about it and not be afraid to say the wrong thing. I yeah. think that's really, really important, for, especially for white people, because I know uh, racism is a really taboo subject. I, I'm really fortunate I'm, I'm mixed heritage. So, yeah. so my, my, my mum is white and I'm proud of that. And my dad is black and I'm proud of that. And I know because I've lived it, I can see you know, not both sides, because no one's on sides, but I can see the different cultures and where things get misinterpreted at times. I'm really fortunate in that way. And sometimes it is, it's just not understanding uh, what it's like to be in another person's shoes. And I think that's the biggest thing we need to change. Yeah, I, the, I, the big thing for me now, where it was, I felt like two, three years ago, we're really heading in the right direction. And then what's happened is, it, it, you know, I, I call it the, the opposition or the, the racists who hide behind things. They, 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 like the Black Lives Matter sort of thing came on. They, they use that against the, yeah. the, the, good, the good of it. And this is yeah. why I say, having the conversations and where I, have, I go out and you know, talk, especially in my era, there's still a lot of people, they go, well, I don't know what to say. So I, and yeah. they're frightened. 
They're actually yeah. fighting. Just, why can't I say this and why can't I say that? And I said, well, just come talk to someone. Ask them how they yeah. feel. You know, because to say, just you having a conversation. I, I remember when John Barnes came to Newcastle and I was talking to him about it when he, we first started at Watford and the abuse that he got. And I was just going, I just don't know how he coped. And he said, well, he, you know, he was lucky enough. He fed off it and he, he, he could do that. But not a, lot of, not a lot of players in them days could do that. And I was talking to him and saying, you know, when he goes out now and speaks to people, he still finds that he says people aren't relaxed around it. They're always a little bit worried what to say. And, and, yeah. and, and, you think, and this is it. I think there's a lot of things need to be sort of like highlighted. It's that understanding that a group of people are that desperate and, and that upset about their treatment that they're just saying we matter black people matter black lives matter that's that that that's the difference of course all lives matter and the people that flew um the all lives matter banner across the the, the pitch at burnley again they're probably white they probably don't understand what it's like to be black or have an empathy or perception of what that that is like so they're coming from a place with, of not much understanding not bad people. They're, they're making a statement, which is true. All life, Of course, all lives matter. But this is why the work that Show Racism, the red card does is so crucial moving forward because it's about education. It's about integration. It's about dialogue and having difficult conversations. And maybe if those people that flew that banner um, across the pitch at Burnley were open to dialogue and open to education, they may not have flown that banner across, the, across that, that, get, at that game. Um, I was asked to, if I was happy to go in to, the, to meet the supporters club at Mill to speak to them, you know, have a conversation. Of course I am. That's what it's all about. It's not about saying a group of people are right or wrong. It's about actually having conversations and, and listening to each other. Not just one way, not just me sitting there telling them, well, this is what I think and you're wrong and what you did was racist. It's about listening to their perceptions and what they've learned and coming to some kind of agreement or understanding of the issues that are at hand. And I think the whole All Lives Matter, um, not it's not a movement, but a statement, it's just a complete misunderstanding of what Black Lives Matter stands for. That's all it is. Yeah, I, I think when the, when the planes flew over, I'm saying as Liam is, you know, you want to speak to these people and understand what their frustration is, you know. Um, you don't know what underlining sort of uh, reasons why they were doing it in, in such a way. Um, but, but I'm just echoing what Liam says, you know, he, 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 it's, it's all about educating and it's all about, you know, just, to, and, and you know what, it, it, it'd have been a fantastic conversation to have had, but if we'd have got the people to actually come out and just go, look, because they, if, if you're prepared to spend that kind of money and to do that, they should be brave enough to come out and go put their views forward and, they, and explain why they did it. It's really difficult. You don't know what you don't know. So if you're black, you don't know what it's like to be white. You're never going to have that understanding. It's the same if you're white. You're never going to have an under, a true understanding or reflection of what it's like to be black. Um, so the best way to make that happen is to have open dialogue and actually people actually speak about their issues. So, for example, I'm someone who was taught from a young age, I'm going to have to work 10 times harder and be 100 times better than someone else who may be white to get the chance that I deserve. And that's not because white people are racist now. That's because there have been centuries and centuries of history that have put a group of people at a, at a disadvantage. And, and I think that's where education, again, is, is so important. Um, this isn't just about the here and now I'm speaking about. We have to go back and we have to understand why we are at this point that we're at now. And the only way you can do that is to understand history and understand that, you know, we, you, you speak about different even you have different racial denominations within our black community. Where, where, when, the Jama when Jamaican people and people from, from the West Indies came over, it was different to the, the history of when a lot of West African people have come to this country. You know? so, and and that those people were brought over to do the menial jobs in our society. They, you know, they were, they were float, you know, we, we speak about um, being at a disadvantage. When you're brought to be bus drivers and you're brought to a country to do cleaning and janitoring and, and all of the things that that and, and low paid nurses and doctors then it takes years and years and years of work to get yourself in a position of being at the same level to apply for jobs or to, to better your own 
um, your bet on your own life or your children's lives. That's what the Black Lives Matter movement stands for, and that's what Show Racism the Red Card stands for is education. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. I love it. And from my point of view, like as you say, I, I can't, you know, experience what you've gone through. But as I said, but I can I'd be around enough people to give me enough education for me to understand that. Hmm. I all, all, all I believe in is equality. It's it's yeah. as simple as that. You just want to be given the same chance as everybody else. And if you're good, and you're better than that other person. That's it. It's as simple as that. And whether it be sport, whether it be work, or whatever, and that there should there should be no colour or religion brought into anything. That it, and that's all I try and do to educate. Like my kids, it's like I remember, like you go back, you know, to me growing up in the seventies, and even my dad, you know, I me- I remember him saying something, and I and I did go what, and he, and I remember me, me uh, my sister, and uh, a black family moved in. And, he, and I remember dad going, don't you be bringing one of them on? And I, and yeah. I remember going, what? And he, yeah. Yeah, he, I don't think he even knew what he was saying. Exactly. He, he was, he'd, never, he'd never been around a black family. And then, mm-hmm. but the difference, what, what I love about now, if I was to say to my kids that same thing, they would be, oh, they'd be uproar. And, and, and I think this is why I, I can see things are going forward. I can see things really improving. Yes, we've got a long way to go. I know that. But I think sometimes we have to not be too negative when things go wrong. You know, let's not jump on. And when things don't go right and you have the, the situation at Millwall, I was like, I know it's the, the media are jumping on it. And, it, and I'm thinking, yeah. no, it's, let's move on. Yes, we've highlighted it. Now let's find out. Let's, let's find about the, the, the better side of it, the, the more important things, you know, the, the, the more positive things that have happened. We're always looking for the negative side, especially the media as well. If I make a statement that I believe to be true from my experience, yeah, I do. I feel like I need to be outstanding in everything that I do. And I, I maybe there are people that hear that won't understand that. Um, even the way I present myself, I, I'm conscious of how I dress. I'm conscious of how I speak, I'm conscious of my mannerisms, I'm conscious of not coming across too aggressive. These are all micro um, things that people of black or ethnic minority live with every single day that they have to be conscious of. One of my best friends, he's not in football, he's a manager and he's a manager in a phone company. And I spoke to him about coaching and management. He's a, he's a manager in a completely different industry. He said, Liam, he said, since I've become a manager, I'm consciously changing my appearance. I'm consciously trying not to come across as aggressive. I'm consciously trying to speak um, how I speak and how I communicate. I don't feel like I'm being myself. And, it's, and a lot of black people and ethnic minority people will understand that because we know that when we walk into a room, a lot of people will prejudge us. That's what prejudice is. Prejud- the word prejudice, it sounds like a really aggressive word. It just means you make a prejudgment on someone. And so I'm trying to be uh, the best coach I can be, hopefully soon the best manager I can be, to change the perceptions of a lot of people at that black people in authority or thinking jobs can't do the tasks that they can. So yeah, I, feel, I do feel like I have to be outstanding every single day and, and hold myself to a higher level of accountability than, than maybe what's gone before me. But that's great because that's going to make me uh, the best possible coach I can be. Liam, that's so interesting for me because I, I just wouldn't see that. Because yeah. it's through my eyes, if you are what you are, <laughs> that's what I'm going to judge you on. And yeah. that's why we, you know, sometimes from my point of view, you know, you can, you know, you do get a bit frustrated because you can go, you know, you on like you'll get like I think it was a uh, Sol Campbell did an interview, and I was and I was actually shouting at the TV, and I'm going, <laughs> you will get a, a but, but I've never been through that. I've never been through yeah. what you've gone through, where you probably have walked into a, a job interview, uh, and and you're just going, this ain't going anywhere, no matter what I do or say, because there's probably people in there who are, like I say, bigoted or for whatever reason. But I think I look at look at things through clearer eyes now, you know, than what I used to. Um, but I think I've always been that way. If, if, you know, if a coach comes in, I, I've never thought to myself, you know, where's he from? Um, uh, what colour is he? Uh, what religion is he? I just, I just think to myself, you know, 
he's either a good coach, a great coach, or a shit coach, you know? And so I, <laughs> that's still I, a place. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I say. So, so I, I just, I think other, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm interested in this though, William. What I don't like though, when I sometimes hear it, is when they say, you must, uh, you must sort of employ so like a, a friend of mine's always it'll go but you have to employ so many sort of uh races and i kind of go is that the way to go i'm not sure on it's that. a great point I, I i'm not i'm not keen on that because i think then you, you you're degrading the actual job itself you know you should be yeah. getting the best thing not what it not 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 to you know fit the criteria don't get that it's a, it's a really, really great question, John. It's a great question, and it goes back to, um, to understanding. So if we understand that a group of people are in an adverse situation in compared to another group of people, you have to positively affect that to get... So, so I'll give you an example. Um, so I'm a coach at Derby. I've had four black players come up to me in 18 months and say, Liam, do you know what? I've, I've never, never really considered coaching after playing. Um, but since you've come in, you've, you've kind of like, yeah. you really made me want to go into that. Because what happens is you see people, maybe not a general, I'm not that old, so not a generation above them, but they see it's visibility. So they see it's possible. So they see right. me. And before the messages to black players, uh, I had a conversation with an outstanding player, won titles, played for England, unbelievable black player say to me, Liam, don't yeah. bother being a coach, you'll never get a job. So what, so, so, so what we have to do to address that is for there to be more visibility. And of course, you have to be outstanding at your job. You have yeah. to, that's, that's the point. And you don't want to ever degrade a job. But what there is an understanding of now is if you look at the statistics, I don't really like to talk about statistics, but if we look at the amount of black players that are in the game, and then we look at the amount of black coaches and managers that are in the game, the, the numbers don't add up. So what you have to do is you have to find a way to positively affect that and make sure that the right people, as you say, and it's always about the right person, regardless of race or gender, mm -hmm. gets the opportunity. And it was really interesting as well, you said about how you would see a coach, but you, you would see that as a player to coach relationship. Yeah. What a lot of people need to do in order to become coaches is impress the people above them. Yeah. And impress it's the people and above. And normally those people were actually from the generation of you, maybe your dad's generation. So educationally, they're thinking in terms of what a black person looks like as opposed to a white person is completely different again. So you mm -hmm. have to break down those barriers as well. So for me to be in a position at Derby, I need to go and interview for a job. I interview for a manager's job. Fantastic football club. Unbelievable football club. Came really close to getting the job. Um, did the first interview. Went and met the club. And a member of the board said to me, he said, uh, so Liam, what makes you think that someone like you can manage a club like this. Now, yeah. So you're getting <laughs> even my point. That in, even then you go, yeah. pardon? <laughs> yeah, but that's my point of, uh, and that's a really difficult thing to, to, to explain to people, that in order for us to change perceptions, you're not just changing players' perceptions or fans' perceptions, you've got to change board members' perceptions. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of different layers to coaching. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, I completely get, you know, the, you know, I would love to live in a world where we don't have to speak about the Rooney rule or speak about making positive changes or um, making sure that at least one black or ethnic minority person is interviewed for a job. But I think we're in a place in society where I think everyone realises, or a lot, not everyone, but a lot of people realise we need to positively affect things for better. And that's yeah. why you implement measures like that is to actually right. just maybe, maybe I, I didn't get that job. Okay. So, but maybe in the future they say, well, you know, Liam's gone away. He's had experience. He interviewed yeah. really well three or four years ago for a job. Let's give him another go. But maybe that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had that first interview. So it's not yeah, even it about even getting, getting the job. It's about putting people in positions where they might not sure. have even had a job interview before. So it, and that's that understanding of where we are at in society. So it's an awareness as well, which is yeah. a massive thing. Yeah. Yeah.